Okay, guys, so um, the centre of attention today is going to come up and tell us in her words what's been happening what's been happening in her life in the last year since she lost Joelle. And um, without further ado, would you like to join us? Sorry, I'm new to all these. Mom, you under the app. Here to support you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out and for showing your support. First, I'd like to just let everyone know who Janelle was. His smile lit up the room. His nature, his kindness, his mannerisms. Everywhere he went, his main objective, he made people laugh, always. He cared about everyone, especially his siblings and his mum. He loved... He, he, did, he just loved being not so much a centre of attention, but just the person who did right by people. He was just a good kid in general. I'll bring you now to the accident. On March 14, 2017, Janelle was hit and run over by AUD. And all she was charged with was being unlicensed. The reason why I'm doing all this and why I'm still so confused is that she only got charged with being unlicensed. Nothing more. Nothing about killing my innocent boy. Whereas there are so many unanswered questions that continuously go through my mind, even yesterday marking 14, 13 months later. There were no skid marks, which shows she didn't go to stop straight away. The dent on her car doesn't make sense as to how she hit him, and where she hit him. To me, it tells me he's on the safe side of the road, his safe side. Her car stops two houses down, and she doesn't get out to render assistance until the first witnesses come out. And even then, her first comments are, Dear God, I'm going to jail. She didn't. She should have been there. So this is her statement. She thought she was going to jail. Yet, the system has told her otherwise. And her daughter's comment on the day which I was spoiled by officers. Mum, you better stop. You just ran over something. And yet on the news, it said me and my daughter didn't see anything. Who's meant to be driving here? Her or her daughter? Everything about that day so far has been just about herself. Because another statement that she's made to one of the other witnesses on that never had a statement taken was, oh my God, I'm a single mum. It's all over for me now. Again, about her. Nothing about this beautiful boy laying there, bleeding. She's just hit him, run over him, and he's practically dying in front of her. Then to make matters worse, I've obviously come running to the top of the street, seeing my son laying on the road. And it's such a big protocol and they're so very adamant about telling me, do not go near your boy, you cannot hold his hand, you can't sit next to him, you can't be near him. So I'm left across the road watching him pass away while they're working on him. Yet I'm so easily handed his black covered bag that have details of his skull on it and also his helmet there and then from the day covered in blood. Nothing's taken in for investigating. Even his skateboard is given to me. Nothing's taken for evidence. Nothing's taken to be to be to be traced for DNA or whether she moved it or whether anything else was done with with any of those, those three items in general. Then I'm also told by residents on the street, this lady has almost swiped me. This lady is a lead fault in the street. 
Mind you, she lived up the road from us, so we saw everything of this lady and her seven children. On the day, I also told her phone records. Sorry, not her phone records, her phone was checked. We've checked her messages, we've checked her phone call. She wasn't on the phone. Did, by, given, by given the details of his helmet, his bag, his skateboard given to me, did they just wipe it out straight away that we're just going to classify it as an accident? Were the phone records subpoenaed? I don't know. I don't have any hard copy. I don't have any paperwork. All I have is my son's black on it. That's all I've got. I couldn't keep the bag. I could possibly just... A bulk of his black was on it. So there was there was a smell. And also the cuts of his skull were all on it. I, I couldn't bring myself to keep it. Also between the comment made on the day by the daughter and another done on, in court, Confused information. Everything that I have is just based on what I've seen, what I've looked at, the details, the evidence that I've had to investigate myself, my family, the torment that we've been put through every day. To me, it tells me it was ruled out, they classified it as an accident. They haven't, they didn't care about charging her for negligence, for, for culpability. She had a history of two weeks earlier driving with no license either. Nothing's explained to me, no hard copies of anything, nothing is nothing is basically in front of me to tell me or explain to me why she was only charged with being unlicensed. I'm the one changing all this charge chasing all this information now. If they if they can't be in touch with me, the police, the DPP, whoever it is that has to be in touch with me to touch base, well maybe they're under pressure. So clearly just having 3,000 officers extra that Andrews wants to put on isn't enough because if you can't keep up with me and tell me a single call, just one phone call, what's going on? With an information of one investigation, my God, how many others are you missing out on? My first encounter with AUD herself. It was in December, December 4th. I only knew of this date, not by the officers in charge of the investigation. I was told by Channel 7 Media. Why wasn't I there? It was adjourned for December 4th. I thought you would have been interested to see what her sentencing was. How can I be there if I don't know what's going on? Again. For anything, no explanation, not kept in the loop, I'm chasing everyone else. To add insult to injury, this woman has simply broken the code of humanity by her behaviour, which is in the least to say abhorrent. Here's a rundown of who AUD is. I first encountered with her at court, December 4th. She sends the officers, the PSO, that are in the courtroom to come and take down my details because she feels threatened that I'm looking at it. And they do that because they need to go by protocol. It's funny what protocol they want to stick to and what protocols they don't want to. We leave the court because it's adjourned for March 2nd. I see her car which she just so selfishly takes into court. More damage done to her, I don't know what else has been done. Has she hit someone else? Has she run someone else over? That's all speculation. I see the dent that hits my son on her car and instinctively just break down. She comes charging at me with her phone, recording me. My sister was by my side. She brings police over to me. She's filming me, taking photos of me, sending people over like I'm doing something to her car. This is the woman, mind you, who's just run over and killed my son. This is the way my first interaction with her has been. There's no sorry. There's no apology. Her treatment to the media, you have all seen. Throwing dirt, waving bags, swearing, and of course who can forget the middle finger. Her first concern and her only priority has always been Number one, herself. 
Her remorsefulness has never even existed. It's never been there. She's never given, to say the least, crap about taking my son's life, what she's done to my family, what she's robbed us of, and this future that we have without one of my four boys included. Where's the respect, where's the accountability to anything at all? If this was the other way around, all I know is that I would not be behaving this way. Not only does her humanity or even respect to anything not exist, it's just out of the window. Her respect to the law is even more obvious, or let's say her lack of respect. She's caught on license two weeks before running over my son. The day that she kills my son, she's also unlicensed. The day that I saw her at court with the same car, her car was unregistered because the registration to that car was cancelled in September. We were at court in December. Then there's also a breach of a family ABO, which was a few weeks after Jadal, where she caused injury to someone. And then on the day that we're all there to see what her sentencing is, where she's giving her 80 hours, she gets a close call, escorted in, escorted out, and pretty much huddled with protection. The weak punishments that she continuously receives makes me only think and wonder why would she even care with what she does? Even if it meant running over my beautiful boy, they're pretty much simply telling her, go for it. Being in this position I'm in, I've had to learn a lot of things that I never thought I had to. One of those things, which I'm unfortunately slowly learning, and it's been mentioned here before today, the perpetrator's rights seem to be held above those of the victims. Her behaviour has been appalling, our treatment has been disgusting, and yet somehow the scales of justice are so out of balance that the magistrate saw it fit to sentence a, a UDN to a mere 80 hours of a community corrections order. Community service, what's that? Raking leaves, wiping windows, cutting grass? For taking my son's life? Is that what Jalal's life was worth? 80 hours of community work? No. Which finally brings me to this to this loophole that I'm continuously given as an excuse as to why she wasn't charged charged with culpable driving with killing Janelle that day or anything other than stupidly being unlicensed. Assistant, Assistant Commissioner Pryor has commented on this loophole and how it needs to be closed. We need to make sure something like this never happens again. No one's child, no one's family member ever deserves to no one deserves to lose anyone in this matter, let alone to be so disrespected. Daniel Andrews' government need to acknowledge and implement Janelle's law and this amendment to the loophole, to this loose sentencing, it needs to be acted upon. Yes! Yeah. Janelle's law! Janelle's law is the least that this is the least that the government can do for my son's life. We have petitions here and online which is on the Justice for Jalal page. Please, if you haven't already signed it, please sign it. It is ridiculous that I need another stupid petition to change this act, while I already have two others going. One with almost 9,000 signatures, and another one with almost 6,000. But this doesn't seem to be enough. I need to satisfy the bureaucrats who keep putting up all these stupid walls, making it difficult, assuming that we're gonna go away. But I'll push this until the end, so that no one ever has to go through this, any of this ever again, and that Jalal's law is going to happen. Because we're not going anywhere. This is 
is all being done, not so much just to make a big hoo like, This is to show my boys what we do, what is right, what is wrong. We're all, we're all raised in a manner to believe and do what is right and wrong. We're pushed to listen to the law, to listen to all the, to, to the rules. Get your, get your hours up to get your learners. Don't drive while you're on drugs. Don't drive while you're, while you're drinking. Don't be in a car that isn't registered. Make sure you've got your roadworthy certificate. This is what I teach my boys. This is what I want them to grow up doing so that they're never in a situation like AUD, but they'll never be in that place because I raise my kids differently. Yeah. I'm here to set an example to my boys, to let them know that we don't give up, especially for, those, for the things that we believe in and for those that we love. I'd like to thank Honourable Shadow Minister McCannis for being here and in support of my case. Mr O'Donoghue, Mr and Mrs Craner for being here as well. George and Maria for your amazing support. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't also, above all else, for all you guys and all your support. I was honestly going to creep up into a little hole and shut off the world until I saw the amount of support that I received from everyone. I'm only here because of you guys. You are pretty much all my strength. I'm hoping to see you all in your beautiful sea of blue Janelle t-shirts again in June when AUD is due to appear in court again for another offence. Let's wear his blue and walk with me, with us, with Janelle. We're all on his journey for some justice for his innocent life and we won't stop until we're heard. Thank you all for coming. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.